Hello and welcome to Plus Sports on Plus TV Africa. It is Friday. The weekend is here already. And I'm sure many of you can't wait to get off work because uh, TGI Friday, right? My name is Mikhail Tinubu, and it's always a pleasure to bring you all the latest sports news from around the world. We start in Africa, specifically regarding the World Cup qualifiers that are about to take place this month between Ghana and Nigeria. According now, with um, COVID-19 still being a reality that we're facing, in a statement, attendance in, in a statement titled "Attendance of Football Fans to Various Stadia," the Ministry of Youth and Sports made clear that football fans who uh, wish to enjoy their favorite game at various league centers, including the game between Ghana Black Star and uh, Nigerian counterparts at the Cape Coast Sports Stadium on March 25th, 2022, must ensure strict adherence to all COVID-19 safety protocols put in place by the government. To this end, the Ministry of Youth and Sports has directed the managers of the Stadia, National Sports Authority, and the Ghana Football Association to admit only fans who are vaccinated into the Stadia, the statement said. It also said the Ghana Health Service will mount a vaccination center at Kumasi, Cape Coast, Takaro, uh, Takoradi, and uh, Tamale Stadium one week before the Ghana-Nigeria Derby. Now, of course, this match has historical significance. And while Ghana have done poorly, did do very poorly in the recently concluded Nations Cup, they might bring a greater urgency to this game, given the nature of the rivalry they've shared with Nigeria for decades, since about 1951. Uh, it should prove to be an interesting game, but now it makes the statement as it read, uh, read makes it clear that a lot of fans are going to have to miss out should they not choose to be vaccinated before the uh, before the match day itself and in fact going forward league games in ghana will require a, a vaccination from fans in order for them to be able to attend the matches such a protocol hasn't been enacted in nigeria just yet but the fact that um, we continue to see various uh, strains rise up and the possibility of um, uh, a more dangerous one spreading across Africa, which has up till now been spared the brunt of a COVID-19 pandemic as we've seen in Europe. It might at some point create a necessity, even in Nigeria, for such a protocol to be enacted. Now, we've brought to you story, uh, the story about um, Chelsea Football Club's owner, Roman Abramovich, deciding to sell the football club. Now, Chelsea fans have had their say, and they say it was inevitable that owner Roman Abramovich was going to sell the club after he came under intense scrutiny following Russia's invasion of Ukraine. The 55-year-old announced the news yesterday, which will bring an end to an almost 19-year reign in which the club won every trophy possible. Fans at, uh, standing outside Stamford Bridge said they were not surprised with the news and that it was the best decision for the club given the circumstances. They did, however, seem a bit worried about new ownership, with one fan saying that, the hope, that he hoped the new owners have deep pockets. Now, Chelsea Football Club have been effectively on sale ever since... Roman Abramovich was banned from having a visa to enter the UK. Um, the fact is, the um, UK government, ha ever since the assassination um, of a former R Russian national, former Russian spy living in the UK, by uh, the administration of Vladimir Putin, the 
Roman Empire has come under greatest scrutiny and up until now it hadn't been officially announced and it had in fact derailed plans, previous plans of renovating Stamford Bridge, a cost of which would have amounted to about 2.6 billion pounds. Those plans were shelved as soon as Roman Abramovich, who also simultaneously owns uh, an Israeli national passport, uh, was barred from entering the UK and since then hasn't been able to actually visit or um, come to the grounds to watch the match in Stamford Bridge. Now, meanwhile, the aftermath... In in the aftermath of Russian billionaire Roman Abramovich's decision to sell Chelsea Football Club following Russia's invasion of Ukraine, the English Premier League's chief executive, Richard Masters, has backed the 55-year-old's decision to sell, calling his continued ownership unsustainable amid growing calls for Abramovich to be hit by sanctions after Russia's invasion of its neighbor. The metals uh, magnet said in a statement on Wednesday that a sale was in the best interest of the reigning champions, uh, European champions and world soccer champions. Uh, Masters welcomed Abramovich's search for a new owner for the London club, but cautioned that sales normally take several weeks. Masters also said that as a consequence of events in Ukraine that Russian President Vladimir Putin has called a special military operation, the Premier League's broadcasting deal to show the division on Russian television is under review. The Russian rights for the current season are owned by a company called Rambler and broadcast on streaming platform Oko with Match TV owned by energy giant Gazprom, then set to start start a six-year deal from 2022-2023 commercial contracts with Russia in all sectors are under scrutiny at the moment. The European Super League seems to have made a comeback in the news. Uh, Andrea Agnelli insists that a European Super League breakaway attempt last April was not a failure and defended his views during a Financial Times Business of Football Summit in London on Thursday. March 3rd. The Juventus chairman was part of a management group aiming to form a 12-team European Super League that led to extensive criticism amongst the football fraternity. Initial plans eventually fell through when Premier League sides Arsenal, Chelsea, Liverpool, Manchester City, Manchester United and Tottenham Hotspur all opted out following fan pressure and protests. To me, it's not a failure. We've been hearing projects of potential breakaway leagues ever since I was probably a teenager. Last year, it was the first time 12 teams made a statement, and it was a very important statement, which was a profound shout of alarm to the system. We have to do something to create a sustainable industry, said Agnelli. Agnelli added that 11 of the 12 contracts signed are still binding while advocating for an open and transparent system opposed to UEFA's governors, who he described as a monopolistic operator and gatekeeper. When asked if he saw Juventus still playing in the Champions League in five years' time, Agnelli said he would be competing in the most prominent international competition. Now, in some sad news, Australian kick cricket was in mourning on Friday, March 4th, following the death of Rod Marsh. With tributes for the former wicket keeper by Prime Minister Scott Morrison and from across the cricketing community, Marsh, who played 96 tests and 92 one day internationals in the 1970s and 1980s, was 74 and died in Adelaide after a heart attack while on his way to a charity event in Bundaberg in Queensland on February 24th. Very sad to hear of the passing of Rudd Marsh, Morrison wrote on Twitter. As a kid, he was my favorite player. He was part of one of the most exciting eras in Australian and world cricket. He will be remembered as one of Australia's greatest ever test cricket players. Regarded as one of Australia's finest wicket keepers, Marsh retired in 1984 with a, 
uh, then world record tally of 355 dismissals. He is fourth on the all-time dismissals list behind South Africa's Mark Butcher, 555, and Australia's Adam Gr Glitch. Uh, March's death was confirmed by his son. Paul, in a statement released by the Australian Cricketers Association, March made his test debut against England in November 1970 and scored 3,633 test runs during a career that lasted more than 13 years. The Western Australian famously combined with fast bowler Dennis Lille to take 95 wickets during the pair's career together. It's a really sad one for Cricket Australia. No matter how old these legends get, it will still always be a shock to our collective system. Now, Australian Cricket Captain Pat Cummins has paid tribute to Rod Marsh after the former Australian wicketkeeper Rod died on Friday. Marsh played 96 tests and his partnership with bowler Dennis Lill was a cornerstone of Australian cricket in the 70s and 80s. He continued his involvement with the sport after his retirement as a player. Marsh would oversee at various stages Australia and England's national cricket academies and become a selector for both countries. Cummins spoke just hours ahead of Australia's first test with Pakistan in Rawalpindi. Where does the time go? Unfortunately, we also have to ask that question right here because uh, we've run out of time. And while it's always a pleasure to bring you all the latest sports news from around the world, um, there's more programming coming up right here on Plus TV Africa. This has been Plus Sports on Plus TV Africa. My name is Mikhail Tinubu. As always, as I leave you, I'd like to remind you that life is never boring with some sports. Have a wonderful day.